Good morning. I am Do Hyun Lee. I will be talking about S6 and M3 um, application in um, biologic new products related papers and other assessment data will be shared. For a bio new drugs, uh, the efficacy comes from biological activities. So uh, the chemical drug product assessment method cannot be applied. So S6 uh, was uh, first registered in 1997, amended in 2011. Addendum was added and that is the latest version. Looking at guideline and um, dossier, in the initial stage, the assessment for general drug products were applied, but recently there is a development um, of technology in disease model animal and transgenic animal. And there is a standardization and harmonization. For example, for antibody drug products, rodent and uh, mammals are used and up to 10 times of therapeutic dose is applied. This is the content. I will compare M3 and S6. I'll be talking about the overview of S6 and addendum to S6. Main concept of M3 and S6. There is an explanation of the objective of M3. What matters most is that non-clinical safety study is for clinical trial. So this is the very uh, base. Sometimes uh, there is no consideration of clinical trials when we uh, do the non-clinical safety study. We have to uh, remember that non-clinical safety study is for clinical trial. For a non-clinical um, study, it includes pharmacology studies and general toxicity studies, and there are other studies included. In the initial stage of non-clinical safety studies, the planning and designing must be done simultaneously with clinical trials. It may, seems um, easy, but there are many cases that planning and designs are done separately. We have to make sure non-clinical safety studies are planned and designed in consideration of human clinical trials to make sure that there is no waste of animals and resources and also to achieve scientific and ethical results. In M3, uh, it uh, provides guidance with regard to timing of non-clinical studies re relative to clinical development. For bio, uh, biologics, S6 must be uh, referred in M3. It only talks about the timing. For life-threatening or serious diseases, case-by-case uh, -case approach must be applied. For innovative therapeutics, Abbreviation, addition, and omission of studies are accepted. For most biologic bi biologics, um, all these three uh, cases can be applied. This is from uh, Jean Wang's presentation last year uh, of Canada regarding M3 and S6. M3 talks about the timing of non-clinical safety study. The objective of S6 guideline includes these three. First, to identify an initial safe dose and subsequent dose escalation scheme in humans. Second, to identify potential target organs for toxicity and for the study of whether such toxicity is reversible. And third, to identify safety parameters for clinical monitoring. The scope of biopharmaceutical new uh, drug products in S6. Uh, please refer to this slide. Impurities, contamination can affect uh, safety. In case of biologics, um, it is even more so. For clinical and non-clinical studies, 
quality uh, must be uh, checked because it can lead to toxicity. The most ideal situation is using the same batch for preclinical and clinical tests. But products are enhanced and it is difficult to use the same preclinical and clinical batch. In this case, characterization and additional test can be used for comparability. To make sure that the batch for clinical and non-clinical tests are comparable. General principles of preclinical safety testing first, relevant animal species. I'll come back to this point later. This is the simplest and the most difficult um, challenge. Age and physiological state of animals, manner of delivery and on dose, and stability of the test material uh, must be considered. In safety test, GLP must be considered in M3. For primary PD studies, uh, GLP not generally conducted. For toxicity, there is this mention of shoot. So this means it should be performed in S6. There is an English word expected. So the, it is uh, recommended to follow GLP. But a specialized test system could be utilized depending on the type of uh, biopharmaceuticals. In some cases, lack of full GLP compliance does not necessarily mean that the data from these studies cannot be used. This is atezolizumab. Repeat those toxicity data. Uh, of 2016 for rodent, uh, no GLP compliance. For mammals, GLP compliant. This is slightly different. This is FDA guideline for cellular and gene therapy product. There are cases that GLP regulation cannot be fully met. A brief statement of the reason for non-compliance um, and independent quality assurance unit person requirement can be met. According to the EMEA um, information, there was no full GLP compliance. The reason was lack of relevant animal. Example to the right is non-GLP preclinical study for medical device. When we apply for FDA approval, we uh, supplied this document indicating independent quality assurance, and we got on FDA approval. For biopharmaceuticals, uh, conventional toxicity tests cannot be applied due to structural property and biological activities. Biological activity and pharmacodynamics of biopharmaceuticals uh, is assessed using in vitro system. Using in vitro system, as you can see from the slide, clinical activity uh, determination, a prediction of specific aspect of in vivo activity and assessment of uh, quantitative, uh, the relative sensitivity is done. And it helps uh, selecting the relevant animal species. And in in vivo tests, it is the most important to uh, select relevant animal species. In vitro and in vivo uh, together is required for extrapolation to human. Atezolizumab's biological activity and pharmacodynamics are checked in in vitro and in vivo system. And this is an example. In biopharmaceuticals, biological activities uh, is important. Rodent and non-rodent are recommended, but uh, it it's not very important because it all comes down to relevant species for immunochemical test and functional test. Let's take an example of a monoclonal antibody. Epitope and receptor expression and cross-reactivity animals can be used. 
PK test of monoclonal antibody, TG mouse, uh, which expresses human FCRN, and cyanomogos are um, de facto standards. Toxicity of antibody product when combined to epitope or uh, due to unintended activity, the, the toxicity can be generated. So the relevant species selection is most important. This is Trasestruma perceptin uh, animal PK study. Comparison of B6 mouse and TG mouse. TG mouse, human uh, PK, uh, ha show similar PK profile. Cynomorgus uh, shows similar PK with human. So when we do antibody PK, um, Cynomorgus and TG mouse are used. For safety evaluation, it is recommended to use two different species. If there is only one relevant species, and if the biologic activity is well known, one species is okay. If there is no relevant species, transgenic animals or homologous protein with a comparable protein uh, is recommended. The comparable material refers to human TNF alpha assessment. When mouse is used, mouse TNF alpha can be given. So this is an example of comparable protein. As you can see from the example, if there is no transgenic animal, if there is no homologous protein, limited toxicity could be assessed. A repeated dose toxicity study of less than 14 days duration that includes an evaluation of important functional endpoints like cardiovascular and respiratory systems. So it's uh, a limited toxicity for major organs. With the development of animal test methodologies, there are a variety of disease model animals. Apart from pharmacological action, unexpected um, actions uh, must be assessed. Disease model animals uh, assessment can be applied for risk-benefit ratio. Hybrid pharmacology and toxicology study design is emerging using disease model animals to look at pharmacology and toxicology at the same time. Number and gender of animals. When the uh, number is higher, it's better. But that does not mean there is unlimited number of animals uh, that we can use. With the higher number, frequency and severity of toxic event uh, can be more accurately assessed. But for prime, non-human primate, sample size is minimized. In this case, uh, the frequency and duration of monitoring must be increased to compensate for the small number of sample size. For administration and dose selection, the road, route and frequency of administration must be the same between preclinical and clinical, but realistically, it's difficult. Faster clearance rate can be used with increased frequency to meet the same level of exposure. The concept of exposure can be explained uh, as AUC. The dark line in this graph is animal PK. And the clearance rate is faster. So to have similar exposure, there is additional um, administration in 12 hours to uh, have similar AUC, similar exposure. Route of administration must be the same as well. If uh, there is a limited bioavailability and limitations due to uh, the route of administration or to size physiology of the animal species, uh, there could be a uh, difference. In this substance, route of 
administration differs. It must be hepatic artery, but due to uh, the size as an alternative gastroduodenal artery administration is done. Given the flow of uh, blood, um, there are no big differences. So gastroduodenal artery was selected. And this is an example of uh, acknowledging the difference of route of administration. Dosage level selection, again, important. M3 recommends MTD, maximum tolerated dose, or MFD, maximum feasible dose. But in reality, MTD and MFD is large volume for biopharmaceuticals. The toxicity comes from biologic activities. So it's not necessarily uh, required to have MTD and M MFD, and this would incur uh, a lot of production costs. So S6 says dose response relationship, which includes toxic dose and no RL, no observed adverse effect level. When we decide actual dosage in vivo and in vitro data is considered. Points to be considered, expected pharmacological, physiological effects, availability of suitable test material and intended clinical use. Uh, all these must be comprehensively considered. Unlike general drug products, uh, immunogenicity is the most important in biopharmaceuticals. In most bio, uh, biopharmaceuticals, they have biologic activity. Um, this immunogenicity is found in most of repeat dose toxicity. Instead of detecting antibody, neutralization of uh, toxicity or neutralization of pharmacological and toxicological changes must be confirmed. Sometimes it's meaningless to have immunogenicity in animals because there would be antibody generation uh, when we switch to human. In silico analysis or in vitro study using PBMC are used to predict immunogenicity in human. This is reduced concentration than expected by repeated administration of biospecific antibody using RET. There is a, a steep drop. This is antidrug antibody ADA uh, generation combined with drug substance, and the concentration in the blood uh, is much lower than expected. It is only natural because human antibody is given, and this um, has an impact on pharmacokinetics. The lower example is observed lower concentration than expected with high anti-drug antibody concentration. This also shows that ADA has a big impact and um, PK and PD. Functional index of potential toxicity is another important item for safety pharmacology. Kim Raya, in vitro expansion test is required to check transformation and to see T cell abnormal, uh, abnormality. And atezilizumab, repeated dose toxicity uh, shows whether there is a hemolytic potential. For Herceptin, cardiotoxicity is monitored in repeat dose toxicity. In ADC, multiple myeloma, blend rep, uh, oscular, ocular toxicity was monitored. So depending on the substance, 
uh, there are a list of different toxicity studies required. Exposure assessment for toxicity is monitored. Exposure is AUC in pharmacodynamics. This is the graph of blood concentration, and exposure is the area below the line. CMAX, one is higher, one is lower. AUC, similar. So exposure, exp exposure is similar between these two drugs. So brief explanation of toxicokinetics. The toxic level depending on exposure. If the blood concentration is uh, calculated. For biopharmaceuticals, it is difficult to have PK standard. PK test, instead of using uh, general animals, relevant animal species must be used for accuracy of the result. Radio labeled proteins, non clinical study. Radio labeled test material must be comparable to or identical to unlabeled material. And PK profile of relevant animal model uh, is used to predict margins of safety based on exposure and dose in clinical study. As for assays, validated methods must be used for clinical and non-clinical. So it's a common sense. For biopharmaceuticals, it has different metabolism. So a general metabolism test cannot be applied. Single dose toxicity. Uh, for systemic toxicity and local toxicity. Through a single dose toxicity study, we could estimate dose for repeated dose toxicity test. For repeated dose toxicity studies, the frequency and route of administration, the regimen must reflect intended clinical use and exposure and the relationship between AUC and um, toxicity, the toxicological effect, it must be reflected and recovery period um, must be considered. In setting the duration, uh, there are differences depending on the drug substances, but usually for biopharmaceuticals, repeated dose toxicity monitoring for one to three months. For short-term use and acute life-threatening disease, two weeks is enough according to the guidance. For chronic indications, up to six months duration is uh, enough according to the guide guideline. Immunotoxicity study mostly about immunogenicity. Additional studies are considered for rare cases. Next, reproductive performance and developmental toxicity studies. Depending on the product uh, characteristics, clinical indication and intended patient population, there could be differences. This is the list of tested animals for approved uh, monoclonal antibody drugs in Japan up to 2018. Reproductive and developmental in Sinomorgus. TG mouse and rabbits partially, but mostly Sinomorgus. Uh, some are omitted. For reproductive and developmental, Tratezumab, Gentuzumab, Alemtuzumab cases, they can be used for uh, women. So in this case, reproductive and developmental toxicity studies are done for nivolumab and atezolizumab for nivolumab. In repeat dose toxicology, no notable effect in the male and female reproductive organ, no test. For atezolizumab, 
the pathway plays a role in fetal maternal tolerance, and there is an increased risk of fetal rejection. So the uh, study was omitted. Non-cancer drug examples. Compared to cancer drugs, uh, the reproductive and developmental uh, studies are done using cyanomorgus. HP, homologous protein, uh, is used. Mice and other relevant, other non-relevant species data. Omalizumab and Ustekizumab for women and children, uh, they can be used uh, for these populations. So reproductive and developmental studies were done. Pavilizumab and Idarusizumab. This is uh, for severe disease and emergency and life-threatening cases. And no, uh, almost no possibility uh, to be given to a woman of childbearing potential. No reproductive, no developmental study. So depending on the population and indication, the, some of the tests can be omitted. Next, genotoxicity. In M3, um, single-dose clinical development trial um, is supported using assay for a gene mutation. S6, because there is almost non-interaction with DNA, tests are not conducted routinely. In case of atezolizumab, since it is a monoclonal antibody and is not expected to interact with DNA, genetic toxicology studies were not conducted. Tracit Tratuzumab, in this case, the genotoxic potential of uh, this uh, substance has been investigated both in vitro and in vivo. So for aposeptin, it was approved in 2004, atezolizumab 2016, in case of monoclonal antibody. In the initial stage, test was done, but recently, based upon um, scientific findings, the tests are omitted. Next, carcinogenicity studies. ICHS1A is the guideline. For biopharmaceuticals, product-specific assessment of carcinogenic potential must be considered. Biological activity of the product, um, the growth factors and immunosuppressive agents, uh, require carcinogenicity studies. But for uh, antibody drugs, uh, they are omitted. Fep peptide hormones and growth factors 25, two-year rodent carcinogenicity, full carcinogenicity study was done in eight cases. And in 10 alternative carcinogenicity, mitogenicity, one-year study um, were done for 10 cases. And no test conducted in seven cases. For monoclonal antibody, full carcinogenicity study only in one case. And in five cases, alternative studies, six month, one year test uh, were conducted. And in the rest of 15 cases, test not conducted. For fusion protein and other protein immune modulators, out of five cases, one full carcinogenicity, two alternative carcinogenicity, two non-conducted. For hematopoietic factors out of seven, GCSF test not conducted. So depending on the characteristics of substance, for coagulation factors out of 10, no full carcinogenicity, two alternative carcinogenicity. Interferons and others, only small number of uh, cases included tests. Next, local tolerance studies. Uh, it should be evaluated. It's not a separate and independent study. It's included in single or repeated dose toxicity studies, um, observing the local response. In 1997, S6 was enacted. Knowledge accumulated technology development developed. So there was an uh, addendum which uh, reflects the uh, real world better.
and it's been already more than 10 years um, so additional amendment may be required when there is a, a clash between original and addendum addendum overrides purpose and background same as the original guideline for scope it's the same for anti-drug uh, anti-cancer products ICHS9 guideline can be referred for species selection relevancy as was explained in the original guideline target sequence homology functional activity are important in vitro in vivo assays are used for tissue cross reactivity this is not important in species relevancy comparison of the uh, amino acid sequences of fcrn between species human and cyanomorgus FCRN um, sequence comparison is explained here. Cyanomorgus uh, sequence uh, similarity 97% compared to others in 60s and 70s. Amino sequence almost the same between human and cyanomorgus due to this reason. PK um, is done, assessment is done using cyanomorgus. Number of species. If two uh, relevant species are used, short term um, can be used with similar results in two species and results understood from MOA. Longer term general toxicity studies in one species is possible. So rodent and uh, monkeys um, and Longer term only with monkeys are current standard. When there is no relevant animal and TG mouse cannot be used, homologous protein can be used to see toxicity in exaggerated pharmacology, but it is not useful for quantitative risk assessment. In designing non-clinical study, dose selection is important. The base for dose selection is pharmacodynamics, PD. High dose can lead to exaggerated pharmacology and adverse effects. Maximum intended pharmacologic effect must be considered and then Tenfold fold exposure multiple over cleaning must be considered. If none of the above can be used, PK data and in vitro binding and pharmacology data uh, can be utilized. So there are uh, the biggest number of factors to consider in selecting those dose. Duration of a repeated dose toxicity, six months enough. For advanced cancer, ICHS9 uh, guideline is a reference for recovery. Whether it's reversible uh, or not must be assessed. It's not to determine um, when uh, if it can be cured. ICHM3 R2 guideline um, is the base, and it must be discussed with regulatory authority. This is repeat dose toxicity study for cyanomorgus to reduce number of a population first high dose 50 milligram per kg in vitro and in vivo so slight toxicity in five milligrams so tenfold 50 was the maximum dose Next, both gender, male and female, because the sample number is too small, we wanted to increase the frequency of monitoring, chemistry and CBC. 
every week for toxicity assessment. Third, after each administration, PK chair was applied to see toxicokinetic and immunogenicity. Lastly, in high dose, 25 and 50 milligram per kg, we added recovery animals to monitor reversal from toxicity. So this is the design with minimum population, which can be approved by regulatory authority. Next, immunogenicity. In vivo does not really apply because uh, there are differences in animal and human. In silico analysis or in vitro study using PBMC are re recommended. And when ADA is required, evidence of altered PD activity. Second, unexpected changes in exposure in the absence of a PD marker. And third, evidence of immune-mediated uh, reactions such as anaphylaxis. In these three cases, ADA must be measured. Reproductive and developmental toxicity. For reproductive, S5 guideline uh, explains what to do. Understanding of species specificity, nature of the product and mechanism of action, immunogenicity, and pharmacokinetic behavior and embryophytal exposure uh, are considered to modify the guideline. The relevant species is usually NHP. When there is no relevant animal species, not even NHP, transgenic mice or homologous protein can be recommended, which are commonly used. This is 2018, 39 approved the monoclonal antibody drugs, uh, cancer drugs in Japan, mostly cyanomorgus for reproductive and developmental tests. TG mouse and red and rabbit are partially used. For non-cancer drugs, mostly uh, again cyanomorgus test, HP homologous protein. Red and mice using HP tests are done for these animals. Next, fertility. S5 guideline talks about fertility. Relevant species when um, it, uh, they are mice and red. Uh, you can use them. If they are not relevant, you can go for other species. Um, Premates are the best. Mating is important, is uh, difficult, and it takes too long. For repeated dose uh, toxicity, we need to see impact on reproductive tract for female. Any impact on menstrual cyclicity for a male, sperm count and uh, hormone levels are considered. Atezolizumab approved in 2016. Uh, no reproductive and developmental test. Menstrual cycle, testes and semen analysis and testosterone analysis were included in repeated dose toxicity. Um, the results were okay, so no additional reproductive and developmental study. Developmental toxicity, embryo fetal development, and pre postnatal development, PPND. Biopharmaceuticals, they have different penetration uh, mechanism to placenta. With high molecular weight, over 5,000, it cannot cross the placenta. For MAB, it's more than 150,000 Dalton. Specific transport mechanism using FC receptor is required to penetrate or cross the placenta. For MAB, the 
there are differences for um, NHP in the initial stage tra uh, transfer rate is lower so this must be considered in case of NHP early pregnancy and gestation day 50 the impact on fetus is not very meaningful the assessment must be done after day 50 and the antibody can be transferred to um, initial lactation before rodent uh, day nine of lactation so for monoclonal antibody drugs enhanced ppnd day uh, 20 uh, dosing from day 20 of gestation to birth is more applicable for reproductive and developmental studies they must be completed before phase three for carcinogenicity, the addendum content similar to original guideline. So there were um, different cases reviewed for biopharmaceuticals. What matters most, again, is this. We uh, approach clinical and non-clinical in a different way, but they must be considered together all in all planning and designing phases everything must be considered in consideration of clinical trials not just non-clinical safety study to make sure that the waste of time energy and resources is max minimized um, with this i'd like to conclude my presentation and i hope uh, you have now better understanding in, prepara in preparing for the biopharmaceuticals application.